welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. And I would love it if you would consider subscribing. And if you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you won't miss an upload. And to my returning subscribers, you know I love you so much. Well, what we're going to be doing today is some spring DIYs. So excited to do this. I think you're really gonna like this. Now, I thought that I would shoot it from a different angle um, I'm hoping maybe that you can see what I'm going to be doing better this way um, when we get to the actual project. So uh, let's know. get started with this first um, little spring DIY. What you'll need is um, you're going to need one of these cloches from the Dollar Tree like this. Okay, and we're just going to use the top part. And you're going to need one of these little um, clay pots. I can't remember if I picked this up at, I think I got this at Dollar Tree. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. Then you're gonna need some eggs of your choice, okay? And then you're going to need some Spanish moss. And then I think we're going to be using these little uh, stamps that I got and some of these little finial caps. So, and some jute, so, and some paint. So let's see how this comes together. The first thing I want to do is take this Waverly chalk paint and plaster. I'm gonna get me some baby wipes. <laughs> I always make such a mess, okay? And I'm just gonna dip into this lid because I don't really need a whole lot. And then I'm gonna pounce it out on this plate. And we're just going to go around here and kind of just give this some added interest. And just kind of go like this. You can put as little or as much as you want. Totally up to you. And I'm going to get the bottom right here around the bottom. It's supposed to be 80 degrees here today. So I'm really getting in that spring mode. I think I'm going to hit this top too. I don't know how much of it you're really going to see, but... Okay, I think I'm liking that pretty well. Let me. Okay, so that was really easy to do. I'll put my... Now I'm going to take these finial caps. You get eight pieces. They say they're plaid. Um, I don't know. I've had this quite a while. I don't know where I got it. Maybe Walmart maybe um, Hobby Lobby, I think Walmart though, okay? And they have two different sizes. They have this smaller size here and then this larger. I wanna get the larger one. I'm gonna get my brush. I put it in there prematurely. <laughs> All right, get back in my lid. I'm gonna stick this on my little finger. It'll be easier to paint. And I'm just gonna paint it. You could paint it solid. You can just go around it however you want. Um, I think I'm gonna put the majority of the paint on, but just leave a few spots where it really doesn't have any. Um, totally up to you, and you can do any color you want. A really pretty green um, would be pretty with this, kind of like that. Just give it a really kind of oldish look, and I'm gonna get underneath there. All right, we're gonna set that over there. This is so easy, don't blink. <laughs> You'll miss it. Okay, then I'm going to get this uh, Spanish moss. I picked it up at Walmart. I've had it for a while. And I'm also, I think, gonna take some Jenga blocks and just stick them down in here to add a little bit of height. You're not really gonna see them. Then I'm gonna get my moss. And I always have trouble when I use moss. So I'm gonna try to avoid a lot of it. Pull it up. Maybe just get a little bit more, not a whole lot. You can put as much in it as you want. I just thought this would be really cute. Okay. Then I'm gonna take these eggs 
And what you can do is you can leave the string on them if you want. I'm just going to pull mine out. Some of them make a bigger mess coming out than others. Ooh, and that made a real big mess. So I'm gonna try to maybe try to glue that back down. I don't think you'll see it, but you might. Okay, no harm, no foul. You'll never know it. All right, now what I want to do, <laughs> this is so simple, seriously, is I think I'm just gonna stick, well first, let me glue this on top. This is going to look so farmhouse, so French country, and very springy. I just love it. And you can make a bunch of these if you wanted to. I'm just gonna put some hot glue. If you know you're not going to like tear it apart, you could use some E6000. And right here's a little indentation. I'm gonna put this right there and press down. And we've made us a little cloche. I think this is gonna be so cute. Now just alternate your eggs in here like that. Is that not adorable? I'm loving it. Okay. Okay. So now, like I said, we've made a cloche. I think that's adorable. Okay. Now, I think I want to take these Ray Dunn stamps that I picked up at TJ Maxx. Okay. I really don't like that. And I tried to paint over it and it's not going to go. I'm going to have to really spray paint to get that on. So, I've decided I don't like the stamps. So, I'm just going to go back. I painted another one. Okay, thank goodness I had one more. You could always, I could have turned this to the back. But, you know, I want to be honest. Not everything I do always turns out. <laughs> and that was a fail. Okay, but we will save it. I think if I had made it lighter, I might have liked it better. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's gone now, okay? <laughs> that little nightmare is gone. All right. So now we're just going to put our eggs back in here. I'll try to hide that blue one. Okay, that's what we're getting so far. I really think that is adorable. Okay, then we're going to take our jute. And I'm gonna take quite a bit because I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm gonna, I think maybe Double it around. Let's see. Maybe I'll double it around through here. Tie a knot. I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm just tying a knot in front. Then I'm going to bring it up here. And I think I'm going to cross it over like that to make it look like it's, you know, that's what's holding it. Holding the lid on, because you don't want your lid flopping off. You could glue it, but I don't want to. Okay. Tie our little knot. You can tie a bow in this, or you can just do a knot. I think I'm just going to do a knot 
and have it like that. Look how cute that is. Let's take a look at it setting somewhere. Okay, this is not where I'm going to put it, but I think that really looks farmhouse, French country. And I just put a little bit of glue there, which you can see is on my finger. I put a little bit of glue there to keep that together, but I think it's so cute. Like I said, you could paint it any color and it's definitely unusual. Okay, for the next spring DIY, what I have is I had Melvin cut me. We have a lot of old wood around the house and I just had him cut me two boards, the size that I wanted, and they could definitely be smaller. It's totally up to you. Then I'm going to, we're going to be using some Waverly chalk paint. We're going to use our IOD spree stamps. I love these. And let's see, and a rolling pin. I'm gonna try to use this. I don't know how well that will work, okay? Now you can take a hammer if you want and beat up the ends. Um, I was going to, but then my hand, I have to be careful. We're going to also use some tight bond glue. I use the original and then the one with the blue. Um, so first of all, what I want to do is I'm going to roll out my clay. So it just depends on what you're going to do. I have the Daz clay and I've also used the Iron Orchids clay. I like them either one. The Daz is much cheaper and it works just as well, okay? Now I'm just going to condition this a little bit. And put this back in here so it doesn't dry out. Okay. I think this is drying out, okay. Now I'm gonna try this. I don't know if I'll be able to use this or not. We'll see. Just gonna roll it out like a pizza dough. It doesn't, it can be as irregular as you want. That side's looking better, so I'm glad about that. So, okay, let's look and see about how. I'm gonna do this. I think I want it a little more this way to come out. Just kind of peel it off. See what you want. Okay, I want it to look very organic. Now with this one, it's gonna roll on here just a little bit. Kind of pull that off the edge like that. All right, now what I want to do is while this is still wet, I'm going to take my sprig stamps and I've gone ahead and cut them loose and see, I'm just going to take this and just press this into this mold Try not to shift. I think I shifted some. Okay. 
and then lift up. And you see what that gives you? It looks so Joanna Gaines. I love that. Now with this one, I'm going to go ahead and just paint this all white, okay? And it will do a little bit of cracking and that's fine, that's not gonna bother me at all. So I'm gonna go back into my Waverly chalk paint and plaster. I just love making things that look so expensive and they're not. <laughs> and it's fun, oh gosh, it's fun. Okay, let's see, let's get some and pour it out here. Again, you could use any color that you wanted. I'm just going, you could paint your board first if you wanted. Um, and I probably should have, I got ahead of myself. It's easier around the edges. If you go ahead and paint it first, it gives you a more seamless look. But this is just going to be so pretty. I could not help myself. <laughs> And I'll give you a look in a minute. I might have to wait till this dries to get really good and in there or take a smaller brush. But I wanted something that looked like hearth and hand, but without that hearth and hand price can be so expensive. I love to go to Target and just look or go on her website and just look for inspiration. Now you don't want to get this really thick over those um, designs because it'll totally go away if you fill it up too much. But I'll let you see what this is looking like. And you definitely want to press this down, which I should have. Can you tell I haven't crafted in a while? <laughs> you can get this as white as, or you can do it like a distressed I what well, I saw, I saw one of hers and it was all white. I saw it online and um, now so it naturally was all like a clay or something like that, but I liked it. I thought it was really pretty and I thought, oh, I can make it. Now you could make yours thinner, your clay, but with my hands, there's just, it's not that practical for me to do that. And uh, I probably just really hurt myself. <laughs> and then I wouldn't be able to do anything. So I left mine a little thicker, but I think it's pretty thick. But the thinner you get it, the more it would resemble hers. And I didn't glue this down. Oh my gosh, where is my mind? Ugh. Okay, well, glue yours down. I think this will probably come up, but that's okay because I will just glue it down, but don't do what I just did. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Glue it down with the tight bond glue and press it down all over. I got so excited that I wasn't thinking and I'll probably go back in better these edges. Okay, this is what we're getting so far. <laughs> I love it, okay? And it might take a couple coats of paint. I'll do another one and I won't mess up. <laughs> because I wanna do another one at a different, you won't do that. You will be more careful. You'll glue yours down, you'll press it down. <laughs> you'll do, and you'll paint it first. You'll do everything I didn't do. <laughs> and yours will turn out beautiful. Okay, that's what we're getting so far. I think that is adorable. Okay, now I'm going to set this over here to dry. Okay, we're doing another one. I was going to anyway. This time I'm gonna use the Waverly Antique Wax. I just wanna give this a pretty effect. And I'm gonna show you the correct way <laughs> to do this. Ugh. I'll pour out a little bit. And I have a little bit of water in my brush. And I like how this 
stain gives you just such a pretty um, look. You can water this stain down if you want. Mine's kind of watered down, not a lot. Not much at all now. Okay. You can also stamp right onto this wood. You don't have to um, put it on anything else. Then I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I think it just gives it a really pretty color. And depending on how much you wipe off is how light it gets. That's how I wanted mine to look, okay? So I'm gonna set that over here. Okay, I'm gonna take some more of this Daz Clay. I'll link um, it in the description box. You can get it at Michael's though, um, but I'll link my Amazon link if you're interested. I had a really little roller, rolling pin, and I can't find it. And I think I would be much happier with it. All right, okay. let's And I am going to same principle, push down on this. These stamps are very versatile. Like I said, you can use them to stamp or go in your clay with. Okay, then we'll pick it up. Okay. Then what I'm gonna do is figure out how I want this on there. And I'm gonna take this rotary cutter from the Dollar Tree. It's kinda. Okay, now before I get too far gone, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to get my tight bond glue. And I'm just going to put this on the back of this. I'm going to flip this back over. Put this on here. And then just start coming down. And then I'm going to take, I think this one's going to be my favorite. I'm going to try to just Cut this. You could use a exacto if you wanted. That might be the best way to cut it. And in some places, it's not going to be all the way around. It's just going to be on the edge. I'm going to press that down. Then I'm going to get my glue again. Kind of, kind of peel this back. Press that down there. You could use a brush if you wanted. I 
think I'm just gonna tear that off. Okay, now we've covered that all the way around. Just gotta press it down good. Got that glue under there. Now I think for this, now I'm gonna go back to my white. The only thing about this Daz clay is it doesn't, it's more of a gray as you can see. And the IOD is whiter, but you can paint it. That's the only difference. But this is much cheaper. So to me, that kind of outweighs any kind of little issue you might have. Okay, we're gonna take this and we are just going to paint this. I really should have painted this before I put it on, but I didn't. So you'll paint yours. Unless you want it to have like a two-toned effect. It's kind of nice actually. Kind of makes it look older, I think. So I'm kind of liking this. Makes it look much more aged. Just like that. Look how pretty that is. And it once it dries, it will be beautiful. It will just look, this is my favorite, okay? So let me let these dry and we will go do our third one. Okay, here these are. Now these aren't where I'm going to set them either. And I have parchment paper under them because they're drying, but just look at that. I love how it just looks old. Like I said, you could totally paint this one all over if you wanted, but I really like that half painted, half not look. I think it looks so good, so old and worn. Then here is this one. I really like how that one turned out as well. I love these. I think they look so farmhouse, so French country, so perfect. Okay, for our last spring little DIY, I think this is going to be so cute. A lot of you may remember when I hauled that little bunny the other day from TJ Maxx. Well, I had picked this up earlier from Target. It was $5, it was with their arts and crafts, and I knew what I wanted to do with this, okay? So, I'm gonna make a little mate for my other bunny. <laughs> so what I did is I just got some scrapbook paper, laid the bunny down on it, and traced it out. Simple, okay? And that gives us this, so cute. You could also use these bunnies as templates, trace them out on fabric and make your own little bunny pillows, okay? So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint this on the edges and on the back and with this chalk paint in plaster. So I'm just gonna go down through here he can be kind of spotty if you want because the other one kind of is. Or you can take a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and distress him. So he doesn't have to be totally covered. It's just whatever you want to do. Okay, here he is dried. Like I said, um, it doesn't have to be a lot on there. It's just whatever you want. I thought that looked nice. So now what I'm going to do, you can either Mod Podge him on or glue him on. And I am going to glue him on. So I'm just gonna take this Elmer's glue stick. And just glue him on here really well. You could do the Mod Podge if you want. I just don't want to push my hand too much and I've done a lot with it. But definitely do whatever you want to do. 
And then we're just going to try to get him on here to where he is positioned. nicely okay and that is what we're getting so far and then there's the back and the sides okay now if you wanted you could take a um, sanding block and just come down through here and kind of tear away some of the sides and soften them um, I'm not going to because of my hand I think it would add a lot to it but I'm not going to do it but that is what we have so far I think he is adorable then I picked up some wooden beads at Walmart various sizes I had some from Amazon but they were the wrong size they were all too big so I picked these up I don't remember how much these were I don't think they were exceptionally expensive okay and then I went ahead and painted two of these white just kind of a rough paint Okay, and then I'm going to get my jute back out. And I'm going to see about how much I want to go around him. I'm going to cut out more than I need. You can put painter's tape or you can do scotch tape. And to tell you the truth, I'm going to do the scotch tape because I have no idea where my painter's tape is. Okay, there's that one. So now I'm just going to tie a big knot right here to kind of just hold this on. It's going to look a little different than most that you've seen, but I want to do mine this way. That's the beauty of it. You can do whatever you want. And let's see how many times do I want to wrap this around his little neck. Okay, here he is. Now, I've debated about whether or not to give him a cute little tail. <laughs> so, I have these Dollar Tree snowballs, and I thought I could give him, I think I will give him a little tail. Why not? Okay, and here he is. I think he is adorable from every angle. So let's take a look at them. Well, here they all are. I love them. Let's start up here. I just think that is so sweet. I love how it looks. Okay, so simple to do too. Okay, then down here is this one. I'm in love with that. And then this one, I went ahead and painted a little more white in there because I thought it was a little too um, blah. And I like it just like this, but look at that. That is so beautiful. And then over here is my bunny. I think he's adorable. So now, there's the female and there is the male and I'm loving it. So cute. Well, I hope you enjoyed these spring DIYs as much as I enjoyed making them. I think they turned out so lovely, so unusual. And I can't wait for these to dry. So, I don't know. I just, I'm obsessing with stuff that looks old and almost like, um, what do you call it? Plaster effect, okay? 
and then our little bunny. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and become a member of our family. And if you subscribe, hit that notification bell and set it to all so you won't miss an upload. So I will see you Tuesday. Um, not sure what for, but it will either be a haul or a DIY. I have something I'm really wanting to do. Um, and if it turns out, oh, I think you'll really enjoy it. So we'll see. So let me go get Maggie and let her say hi to you. Well, here is the baby and she grumbled at mama. She says, I'm so tired, mama. She said between everything that's been going on, people are cutting tree limbs in our neighborhood and mowing grass. She said, there's just so much mama that I have to keep up with. <laughs> so until next time. Bye, guys.